Good afternoon. How is everybody doing? How many of you actually have wearables on right now? Some sort of wearable. That's a lot. You know, wearables, when we think about、uh, where we are and where we will be, has actually come a long, long way. So, very quickly,、um, when we think about wearables and what I do with wearables, is a sense of understanding that when it comes to designing wearables, it's just not a technology. That we as designers actually have to use a little bit of inspiration from our everyday lives. For me, that inspiration comes from reading fiction and science fiction and understanding that the potential of wearables is actually to elevate the human experience. And that human experience could be something as simple as putting a wristwatch on your、uh, wrist to give you superhuman powers. And so, how many of you would like to have superhuman powers? Anybody? Me too. <laughs> so, I am a believer in magic, and that magic for me is understanding that it is our responsibility as designers to create enchanting experiences. And in order to do that, we have an opportunity with wearables and sensors. Um, one of my favorite fashion designers happens to be Oscar de la Renta. And he once said that fashion is about dressing according to what is fashionable. But style is more about being yourself. Being yourself in a world of data where we leave fingerprints across the earth all the time, really trails of ourself, if you think about it that way.、Um, and when you collide that with fashion and clothing, What that does is actually elevate the fashion experience. And so, if you think about our clothing, it has always been a second skin.、Um, that second skin has produced、uh, information around who we are and the places and the places and needs of what we want to be and what we want to be perceived as. So, the reality is around this second skin is that. One of the things that we are seeing、uh, come closer and closer and closer is the fact that it is a personal piece of data, right? So for those of us that are wearing, we are emulating data all the time.、Um, and when you think about how far we have come, we have actually gone from the early 1990s, where wearables were hot couture, right, for the digerati. I mean. Wearables didn't just come on the scene or explode at CES this past year. It is something that has been growing and growing and growing since the 1990s. But open hardware, mass manufacturing, and the quantified self movement has made wearables ready to wear and take us taken us in to a new category. And it is having profound、um, impact on businesses and industry. So it isn't just your personal self and the quantified self. Now you have to understand that when you are in wearables, you are in connected spaces, and it is impacting entertainment, health and wellness, security and access, financial services, fashion, and retail. So today, what I'm going to share with you is the impact of. How wearables has come to these categories, beginning with entertainment. I want you to think about for a second what it meant to just go to a movie theater,、um, you know, five or six years ago, and understand that how is wearables possibly impacting the entertainment industry? Well, for Disney, it's using wearables to bring magic back to the Magic Kingdom. And so this fantastic band、um, that is being touted as kind of next generation ticket is also a payment system, and also has the potential to unlock your door and serve as、uh, a jump the line function for those that are wearing them within the park. When we look at what's going on with Avant Glyph. I want you to think about this as less of、uh, virtual reality and more of bringing the wearable in front of your face. If you look at it, it actually looks like headphones, and you've dropped them over your eyes.、Um, but what that does is brings the HD movie closer to you, and it brings it to you in a way that you've never seen before. 
in a way that you actually feel like a member or a character within the story. And then we can't forget what is Microsoft's next shift from Connect. Microsoft's shift from Connect is Halo Lens. And Halo Lens is essentially bringing the hologram, the world of holograms into the wearable space. And they're bringing them to life not only in banking, but what we are seeing is an impact um, on entertainment as we see it, bringing you closer and closer and closer to the stories that we love. When we take a look at wearables within health and fitness, this has been the killer app for wearables. You know, how, those of you out there who just raised your hand, how many of you are actually utilizing some kind of pedometer or some kind of health measurement? Anybody? Show of hands? Quite a bit of you. Well, what is amazing is that the quantified self seems to be driving this. But what if you could actually go deeper? What if you could use it to do more than just count your steps? That is what Google X Labs is actually asking. Google X Labs is asking um, of smart contacts. Um, one of the projects that they're working on is the ability to transform sight into medical insight. These contacts are actually glucose meters. And so what it is doing is measuring um, the amount of glucose that diabetics actually have in their stream and in, in their bodies at any given time. So when you start to think about how health and wellness is being impacted, here's an example of where they're actually improving the experience of diabetics all over the world because what you will end up what ends up happening with them is that you no longer need a needle to measure that meter or that glucose or your blood uh, temperature. The other company that's actually playing in an interesting space um, and that is actually giving both physicians and parents uh, is Pixie Scientific. And they are delivering on a promise of diapers full of data. Diapers full of data. <laughs> Um, while I won't comment what the data might be, I think that we can all guess. Um, but what's really interesting in this space is that you're seeing more and more um, the ability to monitor your children's and your children's health through different uh, non-evasive ways. And this particular product, which happens to be in prototype right now, is actually something that simply is worn as a diaper. But the only difference is, is that there is an invisible monitor that is within the diaper's layers that actually uh, uh, collects all of the data and emulates it back to a mobile phone application. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention um, one of my favorite designers, Ralph Lauren. One of the things that Ralph Lauren is doing has uh, been really game-changing within the fashion industry because instead of introducing a piece of fashion that had um, essentially um, a non-open structure, non-open hardware, they're using open hardware inside of the fabric of some of their uh, key wearables. And here's an example where this wearable actually is measuring um, everything from heart rate, um, has an accelerometer, um, and is really non-evasive and really quite nice if you're fit like this guy. <laughs> now, when it comes to security, wearables is making a really big impact. And the next couple of examples that I'm going to share with you um, are ones where you are essentially gaining access through, uh, through your wearable, or even better yet, giving you a little bit of that superhuman power to use it as a beacon to call for help. The first example is what Starwood Hotels is doing with their Apple Watch application. How many of you have recently visited an, a Starwood location or have uh, played around with RFID? Fantastic. So one of the key things that is really interesting about this is for those of you who are wearing Apple Watches like I am, with the tap of your wrist, you are able to open your hotel door. So when we think about what that means to access, um, it's really important to start asking the questions around privacy and who has the right to open my hotel door, right? So that brings me to the next invention, just Nimi. How many of you knew that your heart rhythm was a unique identifier to you? Anybody? 
Well, this particular technology is being tested right now by not only hotels, by financial services uh, companies across the globe to actually reduce the friction and take away the pin codes and the passwords that have really served as barriers uh, in our everyday lives. So something like this could use your heart rhythm to actually um, reduce the stress and uh, uh, reduce the number of passwords that you would actually need to uh, remember. For me, you know, when you think about passwords, you have probably 20 of them and you forget 10. Um, and this would be a really unique uh, device if you start to think about what that heart rhythm can do in all the different applications. And a couple of things, and it is rumored, that you're seeing it integrated and uh, tested with the Apple Health Kit. The next one is a Spanish company, a uh, security company that is giving um, police and security professionals across the globe special powers. Here's one that makes um, life a little bit more exciting for them. Imagine being able to be an investigator for just a second and being able to see the room you were about to go in before you ever stepped into it. This technology absolutely, uh, gives them the power to see in front of them, give them foresight, um, so that when they are investigating a crime scene, one of the key things for them is ensuring not only that the professional is secure, but the environment around them is secure. So that's what's going on in security and access. Now finance. Who would have thought that wearables was going to impact finance in the way that it has? I can tell you, as one of the designers for Citibank and Apple Watch, it has had great impact. Because when you start to look at the use cases around how important our money is, it's amazing. One of the key insights that we played with, and I think what's really interesting, is that in a world where we use credit cards and mobile phones to actually pay for things, we've kind of lost track of how much we are spending. How many of you actually still use cash on an everyday basis? Just a show of hands. Less and less. <laughs> now, when you think about that, the less you use cash, it was really easy. You would count it out. 100, 200, oh wow, that bag's very expensive. And you weren't necessarily as mindful about what you were spending on. Now, with wearables, what we have the opportunity to do is not only alert you when your credit card is being used, but actually be a catalyst for progress, which is where the city brand has always been around. And that catalyst for progress is if I'm sitting in a store and I want to charge something to my credit card, all I have to do is look at my wrist and look for the glance. In that glance, it contains two pieces of data. That data is my current balance, in, um, in conjunction with what my credit limit is. And so what it does is gives you a mindfulness to your money. And so that has been impacted uh, and impacted over a million uh, users of the City Mobile app. Now, Oscar is a new insurance company within the United States. And Oscar is really touting itself as a tech-forward insurance company, which you kind of have to chuckle for a second. Insurance companies have not always been known as technology companies. But the real key to this is understanding that they are incentivizing behavior and paying people to walk more. And so that is a game-changer application within the financial services space. And now, fashionable tech. You know, we talked about it going from haute couture into ready to wear. Well, Francesca Rossella and Ryan Jens also believe that they can actually um, get you to update your status as you are doing the walkway. Um, and let's not forget Rebecca Minkoff and Stella Audio creating the clutch speakers. Um, or one of my favorites, which is the cuff. The cuff actually is a piece of jewelry that actually demands your attention. And that attention, you know, for me was, God, that looks like Wonder Woman's cuffs. Wouldn't it be fantastic if you could actually communicate with those cuffs? And the reality is, you can. So a couple of things to think about with wearables. First and foremost, there's an inherent tension in wearable tech. 
First and foremost, it is fashion that begs for the attention, but it also contains human data that is incredibly private. So as designers, one of the things that you have to think about is effortlessly balancing our behavior with privacy. Because if you think about it, we're always conducting public acts. When you wear a piece of jewelry, it begs for attention, yet all the information in that jewelry may be very private. Your health information, it could be information where you live. Um, and so when you think about all of that personal data, there is a bit of a balancing act. And so one of the things that we implore uh, our designers to do is think beyond the visual. Well, you know, when you look at designing for privacy, visual is important, as you saw in some of the examples. You know, I think there is an opportunity to dare you to actually use the rest of your senses for things like alerts, notifications, haptics, hearing, taste, touch, smell. These are all the potential that wearable tech actually brings to us. So when we do that, our opportunity is to move from ready to wear into a smarter second skin. And in doing so, one of the things for me is understanding that uh, designing wearable tech isn't just about observing people's behaviors and their unmet needs, but it's also, in every example that you saw, which is a game changer in the industry, is about anticipating the user's Design. desire. And so with that, um, I'm excited to uh, go to our next speakers who are fantastic examples of game changers in their own right. I want to thank everybody for coming today. Whoop, <laughs> went too fast. And look to wearables to actually become an enhanced superpower for yourself. And when they don't measure up, call it because it's up to us as designers to push the boundaries and make them just that. They should be magical. They should offer enchanting experiences for the wearer. Thank you.